If you're not familiar with the movie Hostel, please know that there will be a few spoilers. The movie Hostel involves three guys. There's Paxton, Josh, and Oli. Paxton and Josh are recent college graduates, and Oli is a divorced dad from Iceland. And they meet Oli while they're backpacking across Europe. While they're in Amsterdam, they're told about a hostel that's in Slovakia that's filled with very beautiful women that love to sleep with American men, so of course they decide to go there. The only thing is, the hostel is a front for a secret organization that's called Elite Hunting Club. And the club is where wealthy members pay to torture and murder victims any way that they would like. All of the members get a bloodhound tattoo, they get access to any weapon that they want, plus their own room to carry out the torture. When it comes to price, Americans are the most expensive. Around the 27 minute mark, Oli disappears and Josh isn't far behind. Paxton is tortured but he does escape. But the terrifying thing about Hostel is that the plot wasn't born out of thin air. Let me explain. Back when Hostel was released in theaters, the director, Eli Roth, he gave an interview to Dread Central, and in that interview, he tells what inspired the plot. This is what he said. It started with a conversation with Ain't Cool News' Harry Knowles. Harry and I were talking about sick stuff that we'd seen on the internet, like that guy in Texas who set it up so that you could control a gun and hunt lions and wild game online. The FBI had shut this guy down, and I think his legal defense was that he was making it so handicapped people could hunt too. It was so left up. I thought, Jesus, why wouldn't they just put a human being in a room? And Harry said, well, actually I found something like that. And he sent me a link to a site where you could go to Thailand and for $10,000 walk into a room, somebody in the head. The site claimed that the person you were had signed up for it and that part of the money would go to their family because they were so broke and were going to die anyway. And it was to give you the thrill of taking another human life. So Eli pictured someone that was so wealthy that they had become numb. When you can buy and do pretty much anything that you want, it takes more and more to excite you. So their thrill came from being able to torture and kill without any consequences. It wasn't hard for me to believe that someone like that existed, especially in Hollywood and all of these other secret organizations. Eli also said, the site itself was real, but you had to give credit card information. And I was at the point where I wanted to do a documentary about it. And it's like, to get any further, I would have had to give personal information. And I figured these people kill people for a living. I'm not going to find out. He said that whether or not the website is true is irrelevant. The point is that someone built a website like this. Somebody thought up, realized, and conceptualized this site. They figured that there was some guy out there that's so bored with money and drugs that can't get off from going to a hooker or a strip club or by doing drugs. They're looking for that next level of thrill. And that, I said, was real. I know people like that. Have you ever heard of the most dangerous game? If not, it's a short story about human beings that are hunted for sport. And as I was looking up information for this video, I found out that there have actually been instances in history where humans have been hunted for sport, especially during times of social upheaval. Between 1971 and 1983, Robert Hansen flew several of his victims into the Alaskan wilderness. He then released them so that he could hunt them. A 2016 report by Daniel Wright predicts the hunting of the poor will become a hobby of the super rich in the future because of economic and ecological disasters and overpopulation. That was terrifying. When I read that, that scared me to death. Now let's talk about Thailand and their tourist deaths and disappearances. There is a city called Turtle Island with a population of around 1,500 people that has earned the name Murder Island because at least 11 tourists have died or disappeared there under mysterious circumstances since 2014. And I read somewhere that there are enough suspicious disappearances there to warrant the island its own CSI franchise. Trusting tourists are often exploited, especially tourists from the West, because there's already an assumption about Westerners, especially white Westerners, and they're often targeted because it's assumed that they have a lot of money. And the writer of this article was living in Thailand, and she wrote, During my years living in the land of smiles, I heard almost daily tales of horrific motorbike, car, boat, and bus accidents, scams and property frauds, drownings and diving accidents, stabbings, suicides, and highly suspicious deaths. 
Most distressing among them were the murders of British youngsters Hannah Wilthridge and David Miller, who were brutally murdered in 2014. And at the time of the event, I was asked by an international news agency to gather some quotes from foreigners living on the island. And a lot of the questions to longtime residents and business owners were met with fear because they felt that their life would be in danger if they spoke on the record. Even the taxis are controlled by the mafia and drink spiking is very common. Nick Pearson, 25, was found floating in an island bay at the foot of a 50-foot drop by scuba divers after he disappeared and drowned following a night out with his family on New Year's Eve. Cops said that he unalived himself, but his parents believed he was murdered. The police didn't even investigate a single witness, and the coroner concluded that there just wasn't enough evidence to say how he passed away. Hannah Witheridge and David Miller were bludgeoned to death with a wooden hoe as they walked back to their hotel room late at night on September the 15th in 2014, and Hannah was also assaulted. The brutality of this particular crime made headlines around the world, and it brought attention to Thailand's dangerous side and it stained their image. Two migrant workers from Burmese were arrested for the crime, and they were found guilty and sentenced to death, but there were questions about DNA evidence and how police handled the case. Eventually, their death sentences were commuted to life in prison. Elise, I don't know how to say her last name, I'm sorry. Her body was found in the jungle, swinging from a rope around her neck eight days after she disappeared. She was the seventh backpacker to have passed in suspicious circumstances in just three years. Locals found her body after becoming suspicious of a monitor lizard that was going back and forth into the jungle. They followed it and they discovered that it had been feeding on her remains, which were found among some rocks. Her remains had to be identified using dental records and previous x-rays. And once again, Thai police claimed that she unalived herself, but her mother believed that someone else was involved. She had signed into the Triple B Hotel under a false name, and she was reluctant to give the hotel her personal details. And there was also an unexplained fire that evening that burned down three bamboo huts, including the one that she had been staying in. On February the 16th in 2015, a Russian tourist named Valentina, 23 years old, disappeared from her hostel. A few days later, staff checked her room and they found her phone, her passport, and her camera. The last known video footage of Valentina showed her walking towards the water and never coming back. And police said that she wanted to break a deep diving record at more than 24 meters or which is I think 70, 78 or 79 feet. Dimitri, 29, was found from the beam of a rented house on New Year's Day in 2015. Again, police said that he unalived himself even though his hands were tied behind his back. He met a woman in Thailand and they were claiming that he did this because she didn't return his advances. Police said that he could have done this to himself as the rope was tied to one hand and a loop was made so the other hand could be inserted. And they also found a note at the scene. A Thai criminologist believes otherwise though. He said that Dimitri had been drinking the night before. It was New Year's Eve and he had gotten so drunk that he wasn't even able to control himself. So he wouldn't have been able to tie himself up so tightly. He said the bruises should have appeared on the neck first and then on the wrists. In 2019, Miriam from Germany was found deceased with severe head wounds and a broken leg and she was repeatedly hit in the face with a rock. In 2016, David disappeared and was later found bound and gagged. He had been hacked into pieces and officers who searched his room found his key. It was still in the door. There are a lot more of these deaths, but I just wanted to stop here. I didn't want the video to be too long or, or get redundant, but just be careful if you plan to go to Thailand. Make sure you do your research first. Thanks for watching.